Hey, what's up, Stock Compounders? Brad here. So today I want to talk about a lesson I learned from Monish Pabrai, okay? Uh, his accidental 60 bagger. Um, it really what inspired this video is yesterday I was talking about a report that was written by Joel Greenblatt about the magic formula. And at the end of that report, uh, he mentioned the uh, portfolio that actually performed best uh, over this couple year period was the one that the person who set it up actually forgot about. Okay, They bought the stocks. They didn't do what they were supposed to do, which was sell the stocks after a year and replace them with new stocks. They just let it go for two years. And that was the top performing portfolio. And so, you know, that to me was a, it was a reminder of how important patience is as an investor. And as I was thinking about patience, I remembered back to this talk that Monish Pabrai gave in 2016. Uh, at Peking University. And um, yeah, I just want to share, uh, I'll, I'll link to that video. It's like two hours, uh, his talk, and then Q&A at Peking University. Um, but this really covers the first 20 minutes or so of that talk. Now, for those of you who don't know, Monish Pabrai, he essentially got started by cloning Warren Buffett. He set up an investment partnership uh, with the same kind of rules that Warren Buffett built into his original partnership, which I believe was back in like 1957, is I think when that Buffett partnership started. Um, and so the, the approach that Pabrai took, Pabrai had just sold his business, it was an IT services business, and he had a million dollars that he didn't need, okay? So, you know, after all of this research of Warren Buffett, he thought, well, you know, why don't I put this magic of compounding to work? If I can take this million dollars and I can find dollars for 50 cents every couple of years in the stock market, uh, you know, if, if you pay 50 cents today and you have a dollar three years from now, that's a double in three years, it's a 26% annual rate of return. Now, if you can do that 26% per year for 30 years, you essentially have a thousand times your money. So that was really the goal that he started out with, that Pabrai started out with was, okay, I'm starting with a million in 1995. Uh, let's see if I can double it every three years. Uh, and let's see if I can end up with a billion uh, 30 years from now, which would be 2025. So essentially the way he started is, like I said, he spent about a year researching, you know, how Warren Buffett invests. Uh, and in 1995, he put that million dollars to work, 970,000 of it he spent in the U.S. buying 10 different stocks, so nine stocks, uh, he put 100,000 in, and then one stock he put 70,000 in, and then 30,000 he invested in India. Uh, now at the time, you know, it was more complicated to invest in India, but he wanted to invest some in India. So uh, 30,000 he put in India. Now half of that, 15,000, he put in one stock in India. And then the other 15,000 he spread out over three additional businesses. So um, what happened? Well, one of the US companies went from 100,000 to 10 million. It did 100x, okay? Now keep in mind the time frame here is 1995 to 2000. So in 2000, you know, he's looking at his portfolio. He sees that one of these U.S. companies is up to 10 million, okay? Started at 100,000. It's done 100 bagger in five years. Um, so he sold that in 2000. And he actually sold, I believe he said, within 5% of the peak, which is insane. Um, it's really impressive. I mean... 
I don't know how many bubbles you guys have been in where you've had money invested in companies that are benefiting from that bubble. But I imagine it is very difficult to sell when you're in a bubble. So Pabrai was able to do that um, with this. Uh, it was CMGI was the company that went up 100 times the U.S. company. Now, this $15,000 bet that he had in India, that was Satyam, Satyam Computers. Now, that went from 15000 to $1.5 million. That was another 100 bagger, okay? It actually went up more than that, but the exchange rate had uh, kind of worked against him. So, in the end, he made 100 times his money in that um, Satyam Computers bet. So two of the 14 stocks in his portfolio from 95 to 2000 were 100 baggers, okay? And he sold those near the peak. So that was very impressive. Now, one of these Indian companies, um, he tried to sell uh, in 2000 or 2001, and they said, oh, you know, th this is a fake stock certificate. You know, he had physical stock certificates that they had sent him when he bought these stocks. And they didn't accept one. They said, no, that looks fake. So he was like, okay, whatever. It's a, a small piece of the pie. I'm just going to put it in my desk and forget about it. So fast forward to 2016. You know, Pabrai finds this stock certificate in his desk been sitting there for 21 years, right? And he, you know, he looks at this certificate and he thinks, this doesn't look fake. This looks like a real stock certificate. So he contacts a broker in India and he says, hey, you know, there's, there's 100 shares on this stock certificate. You know, can I, can I sell this? And I said, sure. So he sent it to them. They sold it um, and he got his money wired to him. Now, what, what struck him is that this stock certificate that he had held for 21 years on accident, he tried to sell it 15 years prior. Um, but that stock was a 60 bagger, okay? That company went up 60X from when he bought in 1995. Uh, it wasn't one of these tech boom stocks. It was you know, basically the equivalent of FedEx in India, okay? Um, so that got him thinking, you know, 60X for this, you know, company that he thought was worthless, this certificate that he thought was worthless, uh, that he accidentally let compound for 21 years. Um, so it got him thinking, how many of the businesses that I've owned in my portfolio, you know, were, were 50 baggers? or more, and I sold them after a, a double or a triple or a 4X. Um, so that's, you know, he, he dives into that a bit in this talk that I've linked to in the description. Um, but, you know, he just looked at those, his Indian holdings, the, the other two that he sold um, for no reason. He, he had every intention of holding those for a decade or more. Um, and, you know, one of them had dropped by about half. It, it, it hadn't done anything. The other one was a 50 bagger, okay? So he sold, you know, he sold for a little bit of a gain, maybe uh, like a 50% or a double after, after five years. And if he had held it, it would have gone up 50 times, okay? So, you know, a couple things here. I really applaud him, like I said before, for you know, being able to look at these tech stocks, seeing, hey, the price to earnings ratio on these is over 100, okay? And, and realizing that these were in bubble territory, that they weren't gonna go up forever, okay? It takes a savvy investor to be able to think like that uh, in a bubble. Um, but he had the wherewithal to sell those two tech stocks that, that had benefited from this crazy dot-com bubble. Um, but these other two, you know, he, he, uh, he had no intention of selling those, and yet he sold them because for whatever reason, I, I think it was 
because he, he was cashing out his other stock from India that had done 100x, gone from 15,000 to 1.5 million. But, you know, there, there was no compelling reason for him to sell these other stocks. So, you know, it, it's just a, a, a great lesson for me in, you know, even some of the best investors in the world, people who have the most patience, right? Like, it's impressive enough, he, he bought, he put a million dollars into these companies and he didn't touch anything for five years. You know, for a lot of people, five years is a long time to sit on something. Um, but, you know, he accidentally sat on this company for 21 years. And, you know, it's just a real lesson, guys. If you, the first lesson is learn how to identify these long-term compounders. And that's also a big part of his talk. He, he kind of um, discovered five different buckets that these great long-term compounders can fit into. Um, but first to recognize that they're potential long-term compounders and second to have the conviction to leave them alone, right? To not have the impatience to cash them out and, and be eager to do something else with that money. Um, so that, that was, that's one of the biggest lessons, um, you know, out of all of these talks that I've watched from, from Pabrai, uh, this lesson of, you know, accidentally falling into a 60 bagger and then going back through, you know, what, what he's bought and sold over the years and, you know, digging into what should he have just bought and forgotten about. And he likes to bring up Crystal. okay? Uh, Crystal is company that Guy Spear bought. So Guy Spear had this brilliant idea of identifying great long-term compounders in the U.S., uh, companies that had a, an incredible long-term competitive advantage, an incredible moat, right? And then looking elsewhere in the world for companies um, that kind of had those same characteristics in different markets. And so you know, he owned Moody's and he loved Moody's. It was obvious to him that Moody's is a company to buy and hold forever. Um, and then because he knew how great Moody's was, he was able to find the equivalent of Moody's in India, which was Crystal. Now he put a few million dollars into Crystal and, you know, over a period of four or five years, his money, I think, 4 x right? He got four times his return in as many years, and he sold out, right? Now, Guy Spear likes to pour salt in the wounds of, uh, sorry, Pabrai likes to pour salt in the wounds of Guy Spear by asking him, hey, Guy, why did you sell Crystal? And he brings up the fact that if Guy Spear had held on to Crystal, that one investment decision, okay, if he hadn't sold Crystal, if he just held on, Crystal would be worth twice as much as his entire current investment portfolio. I think he's managing around 150 million now. Crystal would be worth north of $300 million. And he just put in a couple million. I think Crystal, it was up like 140X since since Guy Spear bought it, which is just crazy. But, you know, it, it again, it's it's the lesson here is less can be more in the game of investing. Um, buy well, do your homework, and then let the, let these great businesses grow your wealth for you. Okay? You don't need to be you don't need to outsmart that simple concept. It's a very simple concept, but it's hard to do. It's hard to do because we're so hardwired to think that the more we do, the more activity we, we have uh, in our investment portfolios, uh, the better we're going to do. We're trained to think um, productivity and, you know, better outcomes come from doing more, but that's uh, simply not true 
in investing most of the time. So I'll leave you guys with that lesson. And I will also, like I said, link to that video. Check it out if you haven't seen it. Uh, it's a fantastic two hours that just packed with, uh, with investment wisdom from, you know, my investment mentor, Monish Babrai. All right, guys, I'll leave you with that, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.